Hey teachers, coming at you with another video. This one is all about student responses and how they can respond to activities. Um, so let's take a look at two basically identical activities except for one thing. So this um, activity here is reading a book on Epic about orcas and then reading and responding with a video. And what's important to note about this activity is, if I were to edit this activity, I have an example, but I do not have a template specified for student responses. So what that means is when students click add response, they're going to get all of these choices of how they could respond. So since I'm not specifying the template, they're going to be able to choose how they want to, how they want to respond. But there's a time and a place for that with activities, certainly. So and that's the first example. Now, if I go back here um, to this example here, um, in the read and respond with a graphic organizer example, the same, act, same exact activity, except I attached a template that I want the students to respond to. Um, and if, if I go into edit activity, that is down here, right? So um, in the previous example, the one right before this, there was no template attached. Now I actually am specifying how I want the students to respond. And they're going to respond by filling out this graphic organizer, maybe recording a video and putting that on it or typing in there, drawing on there. Um, any way that they can respond in the actual um, drawing tool is all the different tools that they could use. Okay, so now if I go back here and I'm just going to, let me go back to class. I'm going to assign, I'm going to assign both of these activities to a sample student. So we'll assign this to a sample student. This is the one without the template. And this is the one with the template. So we'll assign this to the sample student only. Okay, so now if I go back to class and to the activity feed, here's the two examples. All right, so this is the one with the template and this is the one without the template. When I click the one without the template, it's gonna take me to this screen and I get to choose how I want to respond. So maybe I'm gonna choose by with a drawing and I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna type something and I can respond in however way it makes sense for me to respond, but there's no template for me here. So I could say orca babies are called calves, something like that. And then I'm gonna submit my response. So the student had the choice of exactly how they wanted to respond to that activity and it shows up in the journal here after you would approve it. So if I go back to the activity here. Um, now you can also see here um, that there's been one response to this activity and I can click and I can see that response and any of the students that hadn't responded yet would show up down here. Now, here's the example of the one with the uh, graphic organizer. When they click add response, instead of taking them to that choice screen, it's gonna take them right to this uh, template for them to fill out. And so now I can, look for much more specific things that I wanted to get from my students, right? So um, maybe they're going to um, type in the field here. I just like to move it down here. And now they can type um, whatever the main topic is. And they're using this template now to uh, fill out um, a response rather than just having complete freedom or a free choice of what they want to do. So really important to know this, to distinguish between what happens when you provide a template and what happens when you don't provide a template. When you don't provide a template, they're going to be able to choose how they want to respond to an activity. When you do provide a template, they are going to respond to an activity specifically using that template.